Today we're going to be propagating them and talking about rehabbing plant mail and how to best ensure that your plant mail gets to you safely from your end as best as possible. I'm that awkward plant girl. Welcome to my channel. Today is going to be kind of a little different for you. Today I have plant mail. I received some plant mail and it was time sensitive plant mail and I couldn't get to the table in time. My son was doing school this morning and I really wanted to check on my plants because it's winter time and when you order plant mail in the winter time it gets kind of dicey. So I open it up in my other room in my plant area where the lighting is not so good, the quality is not so good. So I'm going to go ahead and roll that for you so that you can see it opening. Um, I will put the timestamp on the video so that you can skip over it if you don't really care to see how it was packaged and whatnot. They packaged and shipped it really, really well. So if you're curious about their shop and about how they ship out their orders and whatnot, this is how they did it. And it may behoove you to watch it if that's something that you're interested in. If not, don't worry about it. Just skip on to X time and then you can watch the types of plants and what I do with them. Today we're going to be propagating them and talking about rehabbing plant mail and how to best ensure that your plant mail gets to you safely from your end as best as possible. And if that's something that you're interested in, then go ahead and stick around. And if not, then I will see you in another video. If you find this video helpful, please give a like. And if you want to see more awesome content and see the future of these propagations that we do today, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And let's get into it. Today I got plant mail. I have two plant mails and I wanted to open them with you guys today. All right, let's do it. These came super fast. These were so ninja quick. I just placed the order earlier this week. I did not expect. Um, let's see if I can open this. Look at that. Oh my god, I can't believe I have this plant. Um, uh, at Gideon's Green on Instagram. I will link her, her Instagram for you guys. You should check it out. But she's the one that convinced me to get this plant. So you can totally thank her for this viewing pleasure right now. Oh my god, check it out. Oh, it's so pretty. And there's four leaves. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see that. Can you guys see that? There is one, two new growths. It looks like a third one was coming in, but it, it's not happy with the travel. Uh, so it's still alive though. It might make it. I think this one will make it and this one will make it as well. Wow. This is just amazing. Oh my God. Oh, so cool. Okay, moving on. I don't want to take up all of your day. All right. This is the Hoya Pubicalyx Lash. There we go. So that kind of focused for you. This is the Hoya Pubicalyx Lash. Uh, there we go. It's got a nice... She cut it in an angle too. I don't know if you can kind of see that. When you're doing cuttings, you want to cut them. Oh, come on. When you're doing cuttings, you want to cut them at an angle, um, so that way they have the most chance at uh, rooting. All right, and then the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. There we go. Alright, so the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. Very cool. 
cool. Very, very cool. And the leaves are very thick and succulent. All right, and then this last one is the Hoya Pubic Alex, if I can get it. There we go. And then it does have some variegation on it. Uh, cool though, I'm excited. I'm very excited. And this one is rooted, I believe. So, very exciting. Uh, so, let's open the next one. So, she's got the little me. You guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Hoya Crimson Queen. She's gonna get very nice. And this is the, the tri-color. So it's gonna get all nice and pink and it's got the variegation and just, oh. <laughs> Yay! Very awesome, very exciting stuff. And honestly, I didn't expect them to get here. I didn't expect any of these plants to get here so soon, but I did want to record this for you. All right. Very exciting stuff. Okay, so let me figure out what I'm gonna do. Give me a sec. spot now uh it's a little bit easier to deal with everything over here um i just couldn't because you know my son was doing school earlier all right so we are gonna take a look at all the stuff um here are the propagations that i'm working on right there so when you first get a plant in the mail you want to make sure that uh, check the root system make sure the roots look all good ordering plants in the mail can be pretty dang scary i get it it totally it's totally freaky. I'm being very careful not to cut the roots here. As I'm doing this, I'm just cutting the tape. Um, it is scary to order these wish list plants online, but they just don't have some of these in my area. So, all right. But what you want to do when you get them in is rehydrate them. I like to soak mine in water for 24 hours or so. I'll do a little bit 
just a couple drops of hydrogen peroxide because that's going to kill any nasty bacteria and it'll rehydrate your plant that way and give them a little bit of a boost. This is a full plant and it came wrapped in a paper towel. Okay, so you do not want the paper towel to be too wet because if it's too wet, then your roots will rot in shipping. If it is not wet at all, then um, it can cause a lot of problems for your plants as well. They can dry out more quickly and then become less viable. So what I'm gonna do is I just have one of these jars. Um, I have on my Instagram how to get these labels off if you're interested. These are just clear little baby food jars. I have a one-year-old, okay, don't judge. I use my tap water, okay? Not everybody uses their tap water. A lot of times it's not okay to use your tap water. I am on a well system with a filter and everything, so it's okay. I just I use my tap water and I wait and I leave it out for a few hours to a couple of days depending. I want it to be room temperature when I put my plants in, so that's my main concern. With normal tap water, like city tap water, it's gonna have the chlorine in it, it's gonna have fluoride in it, um, it can have some other stuff in it or it can be too harsh with minerals and heavy metals and plants don't like that. So if you live in a city and your water is not that great and you're concerned about that, you can go and get filtered water or distilled water, or you can go and buy a filtration system for yourself and just let it sit at room temperature. As long as it's not too hot and not too cold, you don't want to cook your plant. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead. Hopefully this is showing up on camera and I hit play. So let me show you. So this actually has a very substantial root system. You can kind of see there. And there, look how pretty. This is the Hoya Crimson Queen Tri-Color. So I am very excited about this. And I will link the shops that I purchased this from. I'm just gonna add just one drop because it's such a teeny tiny jar. I don't know if you can actually see that. I'll try to put some B-roll of it in for you guys. And then you just wanna kerplop this in and just let it rehydrate. You just wanna let it rehydrate and have the little leaves plump up. It's been shocked in shipping and it's just, it's gonna have a, a tough time for a couple of days and that's totally normal. Hopefully this little jar will do enough of a job. The leaves are not going in the water as I'm pushing this in. There we go. All right, see? Ta-da! So there's that, and I'm just gonna let them soak. All right, that's a full plant that's been fully grown and it doesn't need a whole lot. I just wanted to acclimate to my area. Um, even when I do pot it up, I am going to be putting it in a bag so that the humidity will be higher for it and it'll acclimate a little bit better to my area because I'm not exactly sure what conditions it was grown in, so my conditions may not be the best for it. So I just kind of want to double check on that. Let me see what's going on here. This is the Hoya Pubicalyx, or the Hoya Pubicalyx Splash. It's really hard for me to tell the difference, honestly. I'm being very, very careful not to cut the roots. I'm just trying to cut the bag. And these were shipped perfectly. Like, uh, I've ordered so many plants online. Probably about half of my collection has been ordered online, honestly. And I never have any problems with it. Um, I've had, okay, that's not true. I've had problems when I order multiple plants from big box type stores. And then this is not, it's still a little damp, okay, but it's not completely soaking, it's not dripping water. I'm not gonna be concerned about any rot in here. Oh, it's an actual plant. So it's not cuttings, it's actual rooted. Yep. Let me see if I can show you. Here, there's the leaf. Hopefully it focuses okay for you. There we go. So there is that. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing, actually. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of that room temperature water and then just a couple drops 
This is 3% hydrogen peroxide. I am just gonna plop these rooted cuttings right in here and let them adapt. These leaves are not that happy right there. Like this one is definitely, it, it's a goner. Um, they're sterilized, don't come after me. Here we go. All right, so I think, oh, this one needs to go as well. Um, normally I would leave these leaves on. Normally they could soak up, um, you know, they could soak up more sunlight and give the plant more energy, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off because you can kind of see right here, it's actually dead right here. So no energy that this leaf absorbs is actually gonna go back into the plant because it's just dead right there. So it's gonna be gone. There's no sense in keeping it. And then these are probably gonna grow more leaves, so I'm gonna leave them. I think, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm actually gonna, there we go. Because I have so much of this plant, I'm gonna actually, there's a little root sticking out, get your little roots back in there. You want to make sure all of the roots are actually in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually chop up, let me see if it'll, if it'll actually do it, in between here and make three new plants um, that I can put back in here or I can trade with later. Um, and I'm going to actually propagate these in sphagnum. I'm going to do a sphagnum moss in here and do it that way just like I did for the other ones. So when you take the sphagnum, I I let the sphagnum sit and get wet for about 20 minutes to, I don't know, honestly, I just pour water in it and I let it sit there until I'm ready to use it. And <laughs> I did it this morning, so it's sat here for a couple of hours now. And it actually, it smells really sweet. Have you noticed that? Have you done sphagnum moss before and you've noticed that? It actually smells really, really sweet and earthy. It's just, uh, I actually really enjoy it. Like, I don't, wanna, I don't know, is that weird? I just kind of want to sniff the whole thing. Um, oh, come on, there we go. I bought these brand new and they don't seem to be very sharp. There we go. down in here. There we go. We'll see. Honestly, I don't know. I've heard one of the best ways to get Hoyas to root is to put them in perlite. But then I've also heard that perlite can mess up roots. So, like it, it makes for weaker, you know, malformed roots. So, I don't know. But I've never heard anything bad about sphagnum propagation. And honestly, I've heard a lot of good things about them being antifungal and antimicrobial, etc., etc. So I think I'll take my chances with this lovely lovely sissy propagation. There we go. So, and we'll see what happens with that. Just kind of curplop them right on down in there. All right. And then these guys are gonna sit for a while. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm gonna wait for this one to root up a little bit more. And then once it gets some more roots, I'll actually pot it up. So, and if you go on my Instagram, I probably said this already. If you go on my Instagram, I have how to get the labels off of the jars on there in my highlights. So if you're curious about reusing and recycling, um, you can totally do it that way. Again, being very careful not to cut the roots. And this is exactly how you want your plants to come. These came super, super fast. It is winter time here, and if you're gonna order plants online and have them come in the winter time, you really wanna pay extra. 
pay extra for the heat pack. Don't skimp out on the heat pack because then you're going to be all cranky that your plants arrived and they're all dead and cold. Okay? So, just pay the extra three or five dollars or whatever. I think one of the plants I ordered, I don't know if it's one of these shops, but one of the plants I ordered shot through in the heat pack for free. Probably because they're shipping from a colder area and they already knew that no matter what that they were going to have to put a heat pack in. And I don't know if it was one of these plants, honestly. I know that I did make sure to pay for the heat pack when it was optional. When I was able to get it, you always want to. All right, and if they don't offer it, then you should definitely contact the seller, request it, have them pitch it in, or don't order from that seller, honestly. Because if you order to a colder area, if you live in a colder area and you order your plants and they're gonna be sitting outside in the cold and they have no heat pack, then they're just gonna be dead anyway. You might as well have not wasted the money and not have ordered them, all right? So these shops were all very awesome. I will definitely be linking them. I will probably be showing them right now as we're talking about it. But both of these two shops are amazing and they're on Etsy, so definitely check them out. All right, these actually, yeah, these are all good. Um, the leaves down here in the dirt were a little black, so I was a little concerned about rot, but feeling them, they're fine, no problems. Ooh, so cool. Wanna take a look? See? Check that out. Look at these roots. They are beautiful. There's that. This, um, I think I showed you before. Here we go. This one is gonna go. It's not gonna, it's not gonna survive. This one back here is gonna make it though. And then there's that one right there. Okay, so we're gonna do the same exact thing as before. I don't know if I talked about it before or not, if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but when you put the hydrogen peroxide in there, it'll kill off bad bacteria, it'll kill off any little bits of rot. Uh, if there's a huge amount of rot, then it's not going to take care of that, okay? But just little bits of rot that are just starting, it'll go ahead and take care of that. Um, I have actually rehabbed peperomia that I have root rotted. I have rehabbed successfully full plants in water using the hydrogen peroxide and water mix, all right? Because it just kills off that. Um, and then this one came out a little cranky. Um, I am going to put the Calathea for sure in a Ziploc bag in this. Um, and when I root it up in a little bit, uh, probably, probably two or three days. When I pot it up, I'm going to be putting it in a... A plastic bag as well just so it can adapt humidity wise and that way it'll be a little bit happier my other Calathea seem to like that a bit better and plus they don't like cold at all Calathea do not like cold so we'll we'll be propping that up in some little put it in a little bag and make it all happy I'm a hot mess oh um I totally forgot this one, the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen Tricolor Sexiness was totally a wish list plant. So I'm very excited to get that. And if you want to see my other wish list plants, you can go and check out the video. I'll go ahead and link it below. I did not have a mic for that one though. So please don't go in expecting like super high quality, um, you know, talking. Maybe watch that one on mute. <laughs> If you're interested in more wishlist plants and the plants that you're probably going to be seeing on this channel, uh, you can go check that out. Uh, ta -da! There we go. So we'll have some Hoya pubicalyx or Hoya pubicalyx splash. I'm kind of confused. They look very similar to me, but if you want to go and check that out, feel free. Also, I will be doing updates on all of these. Go ahead and click that subscribe button to see how these guys are doing in a little bit. And I will definitely update you and let you know. I've got, um, I've got a collection video of all of my plants that are gonna be coming out soon, so you can check that out too. If you click the little bell, it will let you know when I put them up, which you already know, blah, blah, blah. And if you have any questions about anything, go ahead and drop your comments down below. Let me know, okay? All right, that's it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned some cool stuff. And if you have any helpful tips, helpful comments, um, advice, any of that jazz, well, please feel free. Bring on the advice, bring it all on.
If you want to see more daily updates on these propagations and these plants and just kind of get to know me a little bit better, uh, go ahead and check out my Instagram. I'm on there every single day. You can DM me with any questions about anything. Other than that, I think that's just about everything. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful 2021. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.